Hi there. Welcome to my blog, Aspiring Mompreneur. And the purpose of my blog is to provide resources uh, for moms who are thinking about working from home. And in this specific blog post, uh, which is going to be a video interview, I'm really pleased to be interviewing a mompreneur so that you get a sense of what is it like to uh, launch a business as a mom. So I'm pleased to welcome Tanya Paxit. Um, she has her very own home-based business and she's going to be talking about her experiences as a mompreneur. And I'm going to go ahead and um, have her take the floor. Tanya, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. would love to learn a little bit more about your business. So if you can tell us about exactly what your business is about. Sure, sure. My name is Tanya Paxit, and I'm, I'm also known as the Truth Uh I've been in business for a little over 15 years, and uh, I started off uh, not as a coach, but ended up as a coach. So uh, know that if you go into the industry of the online world or, or uh, working from home as a parent, uh, you're not always going to go into the perfect niche um, right away. So right now I am actually a strategist. I'm a coach and uh, I help entrepreneurs, more so coaches and teachers, be able to uh, focus on the exact strategy that they need to be able to get where they're going. Well, that sounds really awesome. So it sounds like, based on your description, you work with moms who already have established businesses. Is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Because this could be a potential opportunity for the moms that I work with. They're about to start out on their work-at-home journey, which includes the option to start a business. So that could be a potential match as well. Um, that sounds very, very awesome. So you said you've been in business for how long with Truthpreneur? Um, I've been in business for uh, uh, going on 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been uh, coaching on and off uh, mm -hmm. for all those years as well, um, in between mm -hmm. running a photography and a fashion business. And so, yes, I've done a lot of things, but always, always coaching. Okay. So what inspired you to start this very business? For coaching? Yes, for coaching. What inspired you to go in that direction? Um, well, as I was going through the journey, uh, my neck was hurting. I was working all types of hours. We had to have a storefront. Uh, it, was, it was just a lot of uh, work physically, and I wanted to have more interaction with my kids, uh, mm -hmm. more flexibility. I didn't want to be controlled by um, having to be somewhere even at a storefront, nine to five or however. And uh, so I started the online journey with simple blogging, with uh, strategies and things like that, that uh, I was already sharing in a business, uh, I actually had a business group that I had in my local community that I would run. And we would meet once a month and I would teach. And then I started thinking, what do people thank me for? You know, what, what, when I meet with people at the end, you know, what was the end result? And I started looking at that and I started saying, I know that I could get paid for this. I know I can. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started taking a look at that and realized the coaching industry, the coaching world, and, uh, and realized that I loved as a creator, because I love to create, I was able to actually create something sustainable, walk away and allow it to produce income as well. And it was more conducive to the lifestyle that I desired um, and that I wanted for my children and my family. And so uh, that's kind of what got me on that journey. Oh, that's awesome because um, I am in the same situation too. I wanted to have the total freedom and flexibility to do my own thing, to work from home, doing exactly what I love. Sounds like you discovered your passion, what you're good at, and you leveraged it to, into a workable business. So that is awesome. Um, so given your extensive um, business background, what sort of advice would you offer to moms who are thinking about starting a home-based business? Wow, that's a pretty broad topic <laughs> <laughs> that we could actually get into. Uh, you know, the first thing I would say is get a strategy and a focus uh, that you desire. You know, look at the things that people thank you for. 
that people say, oh my gosh, you help me do this, or oh, I love your cooking, it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. Things that you actually really, really enjoy long term, okay? Things that you're passionate about, that you really, really just enjoy. And then you're gonna take a look at your skills and experiences in those areas and find out what can your skills and experience add to that passion that you already have, that thing that you really love to do. And from that point, uh, you know, you research, you, you build a strategy to that. So you say, um, I don't really want a storefront, uh, I wanna work online. Um, I would love to write a book. I would love to uh, maybe do interviews or have a talk show. So think about what you really like. How do you and your personality, how do you like to flow? And when you have that understanding of how you like to flow from there, then you, you scale up from there and you say, okay, now I'm gonna go into the beginning aspects of my business where I'm starting to build a presence. I'm starting to build relationships and leverage those things. And I'm starting to, you know, research in that area. Because what I find is we, we tend to go into the online world and say, I just want to do this. And you start downloading every ebook on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, videos, everything you can get your hands on. And the truth is half the stuff you don't even like because it's not really your personality and your audience isn't even there. So if you would just research, you would stop all the shiny objects and you know, downloading and buying all these programs that are completely irrelevant to where you're going. Once you have that strategy, then you go ahead and you can execute for that. Okay, that's really good advice because I've been in exactly what you were saying about having that shiny object syndrome, downloading every PDF, you know, listening to every webinar possible and trying to emulate others who have had success, but they were not me. And I think what I hear you saying is that you've got to be yourself as a business owner and you've got to um, zone in on your talent, your area, your strengths, your talent, what you're naturally good at, what you're passionate about in order to succeed. And if you're real and you're s yourself and you infuse your personality, what I'm hearing you saying is that that's going to bring you the customer and bring you customers and the success that you want for your business and to give you the life that you want. A absolutely. And you know, the biggest thing that I've realized is whether you're a network marketing, you can be an affiliate, you can run your own business um, mm -hmm. with your own products. Regardless of the fact, the biggest way to really see how your audience is responding is one on one. And so we tend to just go and post a Facebook post or Twitter and say, buy my product, or I'm excited because I just have this new business. And what you're really doing is repelling people away from you. Mm -hmm. You're not adding, you're not doing it with value. And so uh, you know, a lot of people want to go ahead and they're desperately trying to build their list. And really, essentially, what you want to do is go face to face with those people and build relationships and start closing clients face to face, even before you have a list, because then you're going to start to learn what really they're looking for. And that's something that I did. You know, I, I jump on and I had, I think, about like 20 sessions that I just talked to my ideal client and I, I recorded them, I listened to their verbiage so I could write my sales pages and things like that. So I, I really, a lot of it was research and so many skip that part because they just want to make the money because they want the lifestyle. Exactly, because the research, like you're saying, is absolutely, absolutely vital because you have to find out from your ideal customer or your target market exactly what they want and deliver exactly what they're seeking, what their pain point is. is. So that is a very good point. We all tend to jump in very quickly because, you know, we are desperate to make money. So we just yeah. tend to rush in and start promoting, whereas it's a good idea to take a step back, to do the research, extensive research, talk to people one-on-one -on -one, like you're saying, right. and then create your products or services based on the feedback that you're getting. Um, so uh, another question I have for you, when you first started out, did you go full force into your business or did you work part on your business and part time at another job just to bring in money? Because I'm sure that's a question a lot of my audience has is how do I transition um, because I do need money right now. How do I transition from making money, doing whatever, settling for a, at my current job? and then transitioning into a business. So what would you say, so what was your experience when you started out? 
Well, um, even before I tell you my experience, I will say this just to, to answer that question um, is because I have a very, very unique story of what, what happened for me uh, mm -hmm. that might not happen for, for many, hopefully not. Um, but essentially what you want to do is, like I said, one on one. Start going one on one, whether you're full time, whether you're not, however it might be, whatever's conducive for your growth and for your family, whatever's best. If it's best that you guys quit full time so that way you can save um, $600 on daycare, then work it out in your finances. See where you can kind of, you know, do some yard sales, get rid of some stuff and, and, and lower some bills and things like that to then accommodate that so you can save money. If you're working a full-time job as an executive or doing something like that, then do it on the side and, and start getting yourself to the place where you're doing the one-on-one -on -one and you're producing income. The faster you produce income, the faster you can then take that income and put it into your marketing. A lot of individuals will try to take their, from their own paychecks to put into their business. And while I can understand there is a, a leeway of an investment that you do have to put in, you don't want to condition yourself to thrive off that all the time. You want to teach yourself how to actually produce an income right away because that's what gets you in business. Uh, now, with my experience, I actually uh, did a lot of little side jobs here and there. Um, I did what Mary Kay and I started doing all these little things just to test out the whole arena. Um, but what really, really catapulted me into it is my husband um, at our 10 year anniversary was murdered and he was uh, killed in a hit and run motorcycle accident. Uh, while I was had our little son, he was his birthday was two weeks away, and he was going to turn five. And I was pregnant with our our daughter. She's uh, she was six weeks at the time in my belly. So um, when when that happened, I was I said, you know what? Um, forget it. You know, life is too short, and I wanted to have a different lifestyle and I wanted it for my kids and I said they were gonna need a whole lot more of me in their life and so I was able to take life insurance money uh, and I was able to take uh, Social Security that I had from my children and myself because we had a death benefit so what I did was I, I just went wholehearted into it so my situation is extremely different uh, when it came to that but now, did I start business earlier? Yes, I did. And did I make income? Yes, I did. And what I took is I took that income and I put it in. So I, I did, you know, Avon and Primerica and all these, you know, depending on whatever it was, trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to be. Because I, even from a little girl, I had played with my Barbie dolls. I knew I was a business owner, I, a, an entrepreneur. I knew it. I just didn't, I had to go on a journey. I, I didn't have a coach. And nobody really in my family w went down that road. I paved that way for my family. And so it, it was a very different journey for me. Um, and I didn't have that coach and didn't know I needed one. Uh, so so that a lot of times that's what I recommend for individuals is if they could get that coach to bring them through that process, uh, they could cut a lot of learning curves and, and cut a lot of time. But So that's, in a nutshell, my story. And so it was a, it was a bit different to start off. <laughs> Wow, that is quite a story. You're one amazing person. That, Thank you. Wow, that had to have been real tough to lose a husband like that unexpectedly and then have little children and be pregnant. But you overcame that adversity and you did what you had to do for your children and for yourself. That is really amazing and such an inspiration. Thank you. Yeah, so I hear what you're saying is that um, if you... Um, the best thing to do is to start your business, generate income from that business, and put that into your business. And if you have to have side jobs, set aside something toward your business, but make sure that you don't get caught up in your current job so much that you're not ramping up with your business because that is the situation that I found myself in because um, I spent, uh, I was struggling with infertility, my husband and I were, and then it took us eight years to have our child. And so pre having our baby, I was so focused in trying to get pregnant that I didn't work on getting a work at home situation um, organized. So instead I was working for someone else. And then when I was pregnant, all of a sudden it's like, okay, what do I do now? And so I floundered a lot. 
finally was able to get work at home jobs. But for the first two years, I wanted to have a business, but I was spending so much time on my job that my business was going by the side. Plus, as a brand new mom, my focus was on my child. So eventually, I just had to say, I'm going to cut down my hours, pay as much of the bills as I can, and then um, you know put some money in toward my business to get that going. So now I'm at a point of where I am launching my business. I'm so pleased, and I'm really pleased about that. It also helps when you have backing off a husband. And I know there are a lot of single moms who start their own businesses and they're amazing. Um, and the thing that you said about that resonated is about having a coach. I think that is very important. If you can afford to, to invest in one, it is a very, very good investment. And I found Kimra Luna and, you know, through, through her program, I've learned a lot, which is helping me to succeed in my business. So very, very good advice. The research, um, get yourself a coach and focus as much as you can on your business and put some, devote some income toward that business so that you can ramp up. Um, really, really good advice. Okay. I would say if I could, um, sure. in the whole arena of, of the coaching, a lot of individuals will say, okay, um, I'm just going to get myself a coach. Be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. uh, follow that person, research that person, you know, get into some of their free, free things, get into their Facebook group, get, get to know them, see how they respond, but identify what kind of coach you have. Cause there are mindset coaches. There are coaches that help you just start up. And then there's coaches that help you at the point, like where I'm at, where you're in maybe a year or two and you, you have a good foundation. You're just you still have some of that residue from the shiny objects and all the programs. So you don't really know how to implement everything. To, to according to your personality. Mm -hmm. So so really because some people will go for coaches and then they don't get what they're they need and and then they go in debt and they're drowning and they're still not you know they're not taking action. I've hired coaches where they work on mindset, but I was needing action. I needed actionable steps to go ahead and start sales and marketing and things like that. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank so just pay attention to what you need. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Thank you for throwing that in. Very important to find the right coach for you. Uh, the one that's going to not only just resonate with your personality, but give you everything you need to move your business forward. Because if you get the wrong type of coach, like you're saying, you can end up with all kinds of debt and that's not helpful. And that adds another stress and another level of desperation. So very good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, and a question that always comes up, um, with my ideal customers who are moms wanting to work from home is that how do you balance, you know, creating, you know, launching your business, working on your business with taking care of children? Could you speak to that? Sure. Very easy. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no such thing as balance. It doesn't make sense. There, it, it's never existed. I'll be really honest. Now, there is a place of peace, and that is what you look for. You look for the place, the, the place of peace and, and sanctuary where you're flowing, where you are planning things out. You're looking at your optimal time. You put your calendar out and you do plan and you say, okay, this is my time with my husband. This is me time. And then I'm going to schedule out really great time with my kids and find out when they're home from school. Like for a lot of times I don't work from four to eight because I'm with my kids and that's a non-negotiable. Uh, you know, there's certain times that some things might happen to come up and I discuss it with my husband and see if that's an option that we can take. And so there's a lot of communication with my spouse. If you're single, there's a lot of communication with your calendar and yourself really identifying those things first. And then when all those things are set, then you say, do I want a weekly podcast? What will that take me? How many people will I have to interview and how is that going to flow? Right? If I'm going to blog weekly legitimately can I blog weekly right now or should I just blog monthly and make it epic like 3,500 words or more and then I repurpose my content and schedule my things throughout the week so uh, throughout the months you know throughout the weeks and things like that and do interviews and and maybe that might be the way to do it so really taking again back to the strategy figuring out what is conducive for you and your growth and where you're going and how you function first and foremost and then uh, being flexible. So there's times that um, I've realized I've had to, I've had some things going on, and I, I was a content day, or, or, or you know, whichever. And I said, you know what, my kids are really having a big, a, a tough time. They really need mom right now. 
Um, maybe they were just had a tough day at school or, um, you know, towards the end of the school year. I knew a lot of things were going to be towards my children. So what I did was I got a lighter schedule. I automated more stuff on social media to where I just jumped in and did a lot of um, interaction. But a lot of the posts that I already made were, were more um, done. And then I did maybe a little bit more live stream, like in the morning or something, when the kids weren't around or I, I disciplined them. So you know, hey guys, I need mommy to have her time. That's huge. Parents, a lot of moms do not, they let their kids run them. And they don't discipline their kids and let them know that this is mommy time and you're going to have you time. So a lot of times we train our children not to have an understanding of what their time is. And so when they get older, as grown women or men, they never take time for themselves because they were never conditioned to understand how to have them time. And so, you know, I did a lot of training that way as well. So there's a lot of little nuggets that you can probably watch on the replay. <laughs> um, you might have to watch it a couple times. But uh, uh, essentially what I say is there is no balance. You have to find out what, what time is, is the best for your family. And if you have to devote more, devote more time for your kids at one point, don't get discouraged. It's okay. You, you just have to figure out how to do a little bit more in your business when you can or how to create – better content. For instance, um, I actually, when I, when I was with my little one, I didn't have a lot of time, right? Um, I, I didn't make that time. Or, so what I did was I would use my handy phone and I would speak into my phone and I would do all my blog posts in there. And then I would, whenever I had a time, I would edit or I would send it off to be transcribed. So I would do like a, in six, seven minutes, I could do like an epic blog post and I'd pay $6. So a dollar a minute. And they would transcribe it for me, right? Or eventually, you hire a VA. If you're at that point where you're making some money, the first thing, hire a VA. So they can handle a lot of stuff that, you know, from where, from where you're at. So hopefully that answered your question. I tried to get as many, you know, everybody's at different stages. But realistically, I, I hate the, the whole balance thing because you can't balance it. And it really convicts moms and women and people in general to make them feel like failures. If they're devoting maybe too much time in their business, well, if you're going through a major launch, yeah, I communicate with my husband, honey, I'm gonna be up in my office a lot, of, a lot of the time, I'll come down to visit, but can you get the kids and cook dinner for this week? Mm -hmm. You know, or freeze your dinners, if you're single, freeze your dinners for the week. You know what I mean? And, and do it that way. So planning is, is very, very crucial. But never feel guilty, ever feel guilty that the, you don't have a balance. As long as you have peace, you're fine. That is a really good point about having peace. And there is no such thing as balance. And when I first started out working from home, I was thinking, oh, I should be able to juggle it all. My child is going to be at the laptop while I'm working. And things just didn't work out that way. And I had a lot of stress. But when I learned that I can do my very, you know, that the day is going to wrap up unpredictable, I, can, I need to plan. But I also need to expect the unexpected and work with that. And that unexpected was my toddler. When she needed me, I had to focus on her. Work had to go by the side. And so it is, like you said, a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing, relying on a calendar. When my child got old enough, I did exactly what you said about the mommy time. I would say to her, mommy is working now. This is mommy work time. You work on your work, our project while I work, and then in an hour, you and I are going to do a special project. After the special project, I'm going to work some more, and then we're going to go out on a special outing. So that's what I did. And I learned to accept the fact that I'm not going to complete a project in one sitting because there are going to be interruptions. That's the reality. So you have to basically work, you know, you know, with, you know, with the, uh, the mindset that you, you're going to do the best you can and not feel guilt like you mentioned. And then you also mentioned enlisting help. And if you can get to a point of hiring a virtual assistant, that's wonderful. And Fiverr is also another great resource for getting things yes. done. Um, and so, body swaps. Yes. And like you said, with the video, um, like recording your blog post and getting that transcribed, that's a fantastic idea. But working smarter is... Yeah. 
the way to do it and using technology to your advantage is an awesome thing plus outsourcing if you can um, for me I've learned to recognize communicating to my husband because I'm lucky you know to have a partner to say hey I need to work on this project like you said a launch um, spend the time with the, with our child while I work on this and, and if you're a single mom you know get some friends and then let's help wherever you can if that's possible Otherwise, you know, work around your child's sleep schedule. It's not easy, whether a single mom or you're a mom, you know, working around your child's you know, sleep schedule is another way to get a lot of things accomplished. But it takes a lot of creativity, not feeling the guilt and planning and focus to manage, you know, launching a business with taking care of a child. Very good words of wisdom. Really appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. Let me see. What else do I... Um, I think you gave a lot of good um, recommendations. And can you talk about some of the challenges that you've encountered over the years as a business owner and a mom? Sure. Um, a lot of it was uh, the, the, how do I put it? The identity that the world puts on you, society, that you have to, if you're at home, you're with your kids and you cannot follow your dreams. And so I felt very guilty to, to follow up my dreams. And I would pray and be like, you gave me these dreams, God, you know, how in the world can I not live these out? I don't understand. Why do I feel guilty? And I realized it was what the world was saying, because I realized that really only 3% of the population actually follow their dreams. And when you really look at that grand scheme of the percentage, it's really shocking. And so if you are sitting there saying, I want more, you're stepping into that 3%. So I realized I was a 3%er. And that was a very difficult time for me because I, I felt a lot of guilt. I felt that I wasn't a good mom if I wasn't literally up my kids' butts all the time and, and with them every, every field trip, every, anything that they had, anything whatsoever, I had to be there. I had to be there. I couldn't miss anything. And so there was a, a whole lot of guilt, uh, as well as the whole stipulation of, okay, the moms, they stay at home, they cook, they clean, they bake cookies. And I'm like, but that's not me. And so then I felt less of a woman. And so uh, it, it was a very difficult time. That, that right there was the biggest hump, one of the biggest humps I had to get over. Uh, the other things that I had to get over were the fact of the shiny object syndrome. So getting on and downloading every single thing possible in business and, and just inundating myself and while that's great to learn and buying all these programs and everything else, I realized in the beginning that, you know, uh, you know, that I wanted so much and I thought that this was going to be the next program that was going to set me free and I was going to make six figures. And it was never really that. What got me to that point of, of reaching even a six figures in my business or even 40K my first year online or any of those things was really the strategy and the plan that I had and being then able to find somebody to help me execute that plan. And if I got a program, they had to have either one-on-one -on -one included in the program. They had to have a great um, feedback in, in, their, in their groups and things like that. Uh, whether, you know, now the, a lot of group programs have Facebook groups, but I had to realize um, if I wasn't at Facebook ads, don't buy a program for that. You know, and that was my biggest thing, feeling the need to have to purchase everything because self-development is always saying, invest in yourself. If you don't, you're not serious. And if you don't do this, you're not serious. And if you don't do that, you're not serious. And uh, it was one of those things where I lost myself because I'm thinking, well, I don't want to be on um, Periscope. I don't like Periscope. I don't want to be on it. But the, you have to. You know, this is how you're going to build your business. If you're not on Periscope, you're not serious. And I had to get past those things and say, what is, how does Tanya communicate? How do I get to meet people? How do I grow? And I realized that half the people out there doing live streams, I think they're not making any money because they're not willing to do one-on-one. -on -one. They're not really willing to inbox people and not be spammy, but really get and rebuild relationships with people. And when I really got over that hump, learning that I needed to put some skin in the game, and um, I really needed to meet with people and connect with people because that's what social media is, right? Mm -hmm. We kind of lost that, that whole thought. 
um, I, I really grew a lot. And uh, having the right people uh, that I was accountable to, the right people around me, the right environment. So, uh, and, and you know, because a lot of times we'll go and we'll buy something, we never finish it. We never finish the programs. We never read the full ebook. We never actually really put implement for a 90 day span or a two week span and projects and things like that to be able to actually carry out what we've already paid for. And I had to start holding myself accountable. When I purchased something, I had to not look at it. I started doing my financials in the morning and I said, so, cause I would always buy off of impulse because I thought this was the next thing that was my breakthrough. And, uh, and, and there was more to it than that. And so I had to stop buying on impulse and on emotion. And I had to think logically, is this the next step for me in my business? Is this going to fill all the gaps that I'm asking, all the questions that I have for my next steps? If it is, I'll purchase it, and I'm only working on this program until I'm done. So um, hopefully that helped. There was a couple, there was multiple times in, in that. Um, a lot of it was yielding to to who I am, and how God created me to be, and knowing that it's absolutely okay, and I could be a very great mom and a wonderful wife and a wonderful woman. I could be all that, um, but uh, I, I love there. There's a Proverbs. It's Proverbs 31. And it talks about how a woman is, uh, this woman, she was able to be in the government and be, and, and make clothing for her kids and um, buy real estate. And she was able to do all these things, right? And, and I, as I really studied that out, I realized that she was all things, but it took her her whole life to be that way. Once. You know, she didn't make clothes and, and, and farm and purchase land and go and sell things all at one time. She was a business owner, right? And so I thought about that and I'm like, wow. And it really set me free to realize that it's a full process and I have my whole life. And so take it as I can and, and grow in those increments and always nurture myself in the process so I could be the best in health and mentally in clarity for my children. Well, really, really good nuggets. It's um, amazing that you mentioned Proverbs 31 because as Jews, every Friday night after we light candles and we're getting ready to eat our meal, the husband typically um, recites Proverbs 31 to the wife. And that has always resonated with me also because I saw a woman who was calm, collected, and who accomplished a lot. Yeah. She had a business, she ran her household, she was a woman in her, woman in her own right, she looked elegant, she took care of herself. That resonated with me. And so, and it's a process, like you said, it takes time, it does not happen overnight. And if we can divest ourselves of what society expects of us as women and get rid of the guilt and just be ourselves, then I think we'll be at a healthier point to start a business, to do the things that we really want. Because when I first became a mom and we needed income because I have student loans and you know life expenses as well, and we needed the second income, I was stressed out. And a friend told me that you know, set aside that, just focus on being a mom. You cannot realistically, you know, launch your own business, work from home and be a mom at the same time. And I didn't buy that because I can be just as good of a mom to my daughter working uh, from home on my own business. And you know, that's, that's me, that's me, that's who I am. And it's not just because of circumstances. I know that uh, circumstances of you know you know bills and everything it's just who I am I have to have my own business I'm entrepreneurial I'm a professional I'm an intelligent woman that's me I got yeah. to do that and I, at the same time I'm a mom I'm a wife I'm a friend and a daughter and everything and that's why I always say I always say I'm psychologically unemployable mm-hmm I just I I love unemployable I just can't <laughs> uh -huh. same here I agree I am also uh, psychologically unemployable I have to work on my own terms my own schedule doing what I love and controlling the income and uh, you know having your own home-based business is not easy there are challenges because you don't know what you're going to make from month to month and it can be stressful but if you persevere and you have a strategy and a plan 
you are going to succeed. And I like what you said about being focused and not going after every program and chasing after every shiny object because I was there thinking that that was going to lead me to be a millionaire, <laughs> but it didn't work because I didn't have the time to complete all the programs. So now I'm more focused, like you said, on only doing the programs that's going to align with my business objectives and goals. Very, very good nuggets. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. That, that's exactly why... Um, over the years, I said, you know what? I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be known as Miss Detox. You know, I'm going to help you business detox. I'm going to help you put together all those things mm -hmm. and put all the little things together to make sense and strategize. So that way you can stop doing, you know, make sense of what you've already purchased and then stop purchasing other things that are just irrelevant for where you need to go. And so that's actually how I got into it more of the coaching side in depth. I started off really simply with blogging and things like that. But as I went in deeper, I realized the need for people to get clarity. They, they, they thought they had clarity, but they were really spinning their wheels. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. So, and that's amazing how when you start off on one journey, you evolve into something else. And I like the detox business. That is awesome. And one of the things that I've discovered as an entrepreneur, that there are all kinds of creative online and offline businesses that are out there. So if you're a mom who's thinking of starting a business because you have an awesome idea, an awesome product, you can totally do it. All the resources are available. There are so many moms who are doing exactly what you desire. You can achieve it. It's just like uh, Tanya was saying, have a strategy, have a plan, be focused and selective in what resources you use for your business and what programs that you sign out for and be financially strategic and logical as opposed to working, you know, reacting from your emotion. A lot of great nuggets that you shared with us, Tanya. Thank you so much. This has been very helpful. Um, before we sign off, is there anything else that you would like to add for our moms? You know, um, you're wired a certain way. Uh, you're created in such a beautiful way that when you get these crazy ideas that you think are crazy, uh, it, they're really not crazy, right? They're, they're meant for you uh, not to tease you, but to show you what is absolutely possible. I've seen moms that, that do training they make programs on potty training. And m moms hire their, you know, these women to help them potty train their children. Um, it, it, and it's all online. It's amazing what we can do. And we look at all these little trinkets and all these little things that we have all, all over. You know, we have our laptop cases and pens and, and sticky pads and, and all these things. And it's like somebody had an idea a frustration, something they wanted to solve, and they said, what if? And that was the beginning of so many beautiful inventions that make our life easier, and sometimes too easy that make us not even social, right? So mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you to fully take a, take a plan, strategize, plan it out, and then start executing it, and do it to the best of your ability and knowledge, and uh, definitely definitely realize that uh, that your dream is not silly that your dream to you know be at home with your children to be in their lives to be the woman the, the main person in their lives to nurture them and love them and care for them uh, and and you know it, it's not it's not a bad idea and that it's absolutely possible and so I want to encourage you to step out and do it because it is hard but it is so rewarding Thank you. I really like what you said. So if you have any dream or idea, pursue it. It's not ridiculous because you never know. You could be the answer to someone else's problems. And so many things have been created and invented because of ideas that somebody had in the middle of the night or in the shower or where, wherever. Very, very helpful because we can have the life that we desire to spend the time with our child, to do fun things with them, to go on vacations, whatever it is that you, your heart's desire, it's right there. And there is no shortages of businesses and you can be a part of that wonderful world, that wonderful online world. 
Thank you so much, Tanya. Really, really do appreciate it. This has been such an educational um, interview. You gave all kinds of nuggets uh, for <laughs> moms who are wanting to start a business and are not sure how to begin. And you've offered hope. And that's important to have that hope, the desire, the strategy, and the plan to move forward. So I really do appreciate you. Absolutely. I, I always end my, my, um, my live streams and anything that I do, I always end it with this. And I say, your passion is the pathway to your destiny. And so, you know, you're going to, you're fulfilling a destiny and it is okay to want the nice cars and all those things. It's just you wanting life you wanting to experience life. So like I said, uh, the, your passion is the pathway to your destiny. It might not be the end result of where you're going. Things will change. Like I started off in Mary Kay and now I'm a coach, you know? I went through photography and fashion and all these things, but I yielded to the process and understood that it was just a pathway. Awesome, I love it. Your passion is the pathway to your destiny. Very good. I think yeah. we'll end on that note. So remember everyone, your passion yeah. is the pathway to your destiny. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, bye-bye.